Good morning and welcome to Moments with Melinda. I am your host, Melinda Moulton, and my guest today is Chris Cleary. Hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm doing good, Melinda. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so glad that you agreed to be on my show. I have so much I want to talk to you about today. Um, let me share with my viewers a little bit about you. Chris Cleary is a fourth generation Vermonter. He is a sculptor, artist, performer, influencer, wizard of the four elements, entrepreneur, and a renaissance man. I think I kind of nailed it, don't you? Sounds pretty pretty close to the truth. That's pretty close to the truth. That's really true. And my friend, and my friend. So Chris, let's begin. Um, and let's talk, uh, talk about your growing up in Vermont and about your family. I know that your father's business helped to inspire you to follow in his footsteps. Talk a little bit about growing up in Vermont. Yeah, so uh, my father was a um, kind of a, a, a do-it-yourselfer. Um, he was a stone mason by trade and then started a stone company. Um, and so for years I would follow him to jobs and play with stones that would, instead of like playing with lumber scraps, that was what I did. I played with little stone scraps and made little stone castles and stuff. And then, uh, you know, he, my family really always uh, kind of pushed the arts at me because I was a really hyperactive little kid, you know. Um, so uh, we just had a, a really, really fun, uh, fun youth, if you will. Um, anyway. Uh, but, and talk about his business, because I understand that he owns one of the largest rock uh, business. Yeah, yeah. He owns a stone company. Yeah. He owns a stone company, um, in Richmond, uh, it started out in Williston, um, at Taft Corners. Uh, and, um, uh, now he's acquired two quarries over the years. He just bought one this year. Um, it's pretty neat. So, um, yeah, stone is definitely in my, in my blood. Um, and it was, um, it was a neat business to watch evolve because nobody else was doing that at that point. It was like new landscaping was new at that point in Vermont. And, uh, he kind of seized the opportunity and went with it. And, um, my wife and I actually, um, we're going to take the business over at one point. So, um, and so we, we both worked there. It was, it was very neat. That is so exciting. Now, back in the day, um, you know, to, your parents encouraged you to, to get into, into art, to become an artist. Talk to us a little bit about that. In what ways as a child were you doing art? Um, so I used to do a lot of really detailed drawing. I had uh, very finite um, drawings. And then I got into sculpting with clay, but like the, the plastic clay, you know, the Crayola clay. And I would make all sorts of models. Uh, my uh, science teacher actually had my digestive system model up for, um, I think it was 13 years. I, I talked to her after. Um, so, uh, and then um, at then, um, th so that was most of like my childhood art. Um, but then uh, my father kind of promoted or um, pushed me towards the stone arts because uh, it was part of the family business, you know. Right, and 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 Chris, you attended the West Rutland Carving Studio, and shortly thereafter, that's when you started your own business, which um, which has been a smashing success. But you actually went off to to carving school. Yeah, that was a great experience. I always said if I was a trust funder, I would go there for every month because they have they have courses every month and they have the best food there too. And it's just a great environment. You're around all the old quarries there and it everything is stone there. It was definitely inspiring. It's sort of the Kripalu of stone sculpting. Did you and 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 um so I just think that's so incredible because people don't know that there's, I bet you a lot of my viewers don't know that there's the West Rutland Carving Studio and they're still around, right? Yeah, it's actually called the West Rutland, um, I want to say it's called the Sculpture Center or Sculpture Studio now. Um, they uh, they do so much more than stone there. They do metal, um, copper, um, they even have, um, you know, all sorts of courses. It's not just stone. Um, it's really, really inspiring there, so. So I know that it's that it's in your blood. I know it's in your DNA and it comes from growing up with your father's uh, business. But what is it about stone um, that captures your imagination? Because stone 
when we see stones, they've been here for millennial. Um, talk to us about about that for millions. Yeah. Of years. Talk about your what 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 captures you in working with stone. Um, it, it's such a permanent structure. It's such a permanent element, um, and uh, I, I I've always been like a historian or a historic buff and. Uh, to me, being able to put a date on a stone or words on a stone and know that somebody in a thousand years might find it is fascinating. I love it. So um, it's like leaving your your mark on the earth and trying to, you know, respect that and do the best you can. Um, and you're doing that and to all my viewers when you see the stones, you know, that have these beautiful words in them or drawings or whatever. I would venture that a lot of those come from you, Chris, wouldn't you say? Well, I, I like to think so. Um, I know that other people do this, you know, I'm not the only one, but um, I, I usually can tell the work that I've done and, and um, just we have a different style. Uh, my wife uh, works with me and she does a lot of the uh, design work for the lettering and all of the words. And we, we have a certain style and you can almost always tell it. But um, yeah, well, you and Kim do have a special style and um you have such a powerful and wonderful um, relationship and marriage um, where you work so closely together. Talk to us about your art working with stone and about your own special techniques that you developed when you went after you went to carving school. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so at carving school, um, the reason I went there is I really wanted to learn more about the old style, um, not necessarily hammer and chisel old style, but the pneumatic uh, style, um, pneumatic chisels and bar relief work. And I was able to learn how to, um, my, uh, my teacher there was named Mashiko and her specialty was medallion work, making things pop out and in a special bar relief um, aspect. And casting shadows fast and, and working small areas. And so when I came out of that, um, it definitely propelled me to do more stuff like that. Um, uh, more large scale sculpture, um, actual sculptural work, instead of just carving into stones, instead of doing um, portraits into a stone, I was taking a raw block and turning it into something, which it, it I love it, you know. Um, and you, but, and you and you use sandblasting, right, to do a lot of your work? Um, the sandblasting is for the carving, the, the uh, relief carving. Um, and uh, that's, um, that's how we do all the lettering and the memorial work. I do a lot of memorials for humans uh, as well as pets. Um, uh, and then I do these things called word gardens, which are um, also sand carved. Um, we call it sand carving, but sandblasting, yeah, is the same. Sand carving is much more gentle for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Sand carving is much more appropriate. Um, um, but, well, I have one of your benches. It has my grandchildren's name names in it, and yeah. it's, a, it's a treasured piece. And I know that we have a we have a couple a piece of yours up at Main Street Landing, too, of your beautiful fish. And um, so folks, so my viewers can visit your website. It's called ontherocks.com. Um, so let's move into your other artwork. You also sculpt in wood and you create large sculptures. Most notably recently was the huge champ that you created for the waterfront fireworks on New Year's Eve. I think you did that twice. And I just saw one yesterday, last night, I just saw one of your sculptures at the Isham Farm. Um, and they're large, they're beautiful, they're message bearing and unique. Talk to us about, about those large sculptures that are getting so much attention, Chris. Yeah, uh, we started those in, um, it was for my 35th birthday, can't remember exactly which year. And um, I had been to Burning Man before, um, but I wasn't able to make it back because artists can't always afford to go to Burning Man. So I decided to make our own Burning Man here. So I started out, they started out raw and rough, um, basically scrap pallets and whatever wood we could find, um, hops, vines, you name it, you know, thatch. And then um, they just, uh, I got hooked on it. It was just so fun to get people together and see the look on their face as you burn it and to, you know, put some gunpowder in there or some fireworks. And it was just, um, it's a form of community art that, uh, it's kind of taken for granted, you know, everybody owns that sculpture the same. It's not mine. It's not his, it's not hers. 
it's everybody's, you know, and that's what I love about it. Um, so I kind of got hooked on that. And within the first three years, I think I was already at a dozen of them. Um, and they're all burned, you know, so you can't really ever see them again. Occasionally, I have some like letters and words that I'll build for people that are still around. Um, but it, you know, everybody asks, how can you burn something like that? Um, and that's, I already answered that question. Um, it's just a form of community art that you can't, um, you can't um, replace. Uh, and also fire is a form of art that you can't, um, you can't capture, not in photographs, not in um, paintings, not in sculpture. It, it is a true form of art. So by creating these things that are meant to burn and, you know, placing accelerants in certain spots and weak points so that they collapse in a certain way it is uh it's like the opposite of the stone work that i do it's uh impermanence it's um one of a kind and it's gone you know um instead of something that you hope is going to last a thousand years so um it's it's a, i don't know what you want to call it well cr well chris it's a gift I mean, you're giving that gift uh, to the community, and um, and I don't know many artists who who burn their their art that they work so hard on, but it, it is a gift, and that's what you're giving to your community. So, Chris, what are you working on right now? Um, right now, I am working on a uh, stone bench for my grandparents who passed away 10 years ago, and it, they, uh, my family bought a plot. Um, they're doing a trail network behind the Bennington Library, and they bought a plot for a bench for my grandparents, and they worked in the community for about 20 years. Uh, no, much, much more than that, up until they were 98 years old. Anyway, so I'm uh, doing a big Celtic knot on it and then words around that. It's a gigantic stone. It's about the size of a sofa. So it'll be cool. Um, and then um, we've been uh, hosting a thing called Fire Theater here, um, where we uh, get uh, upwards of a dozen fire performers. And we have a back, you know, a stage area set up in our backyard. It's kind of like a little bit of a carnival feel. And so we've been hosting that this summer. So I've been doing a lot of um, working on the infrastructure, building like um, circus panels and um, setting up stuff like that. So that's kind of um, on the side. That's what I'm doing. Um, well, Chris, you, you've got to get me on your mailing list because I know that my son in love and my grandson have come over and attended your events. You need to get me on your your mailing list so I can Absolutely. know when these are happening. It's um because they they love them and Rowan in particular, he just goes nuts for it. Um, yeah. now your sculptures, whether they're stone or wood, they are dotting the landscape of Vermont and elsewhere. And you won a Seven Days Daisy as the number one sculptor in the state. That's a, that's a terrific accolade. How do you feel about that, Chris? Cause you're a humble um, man. You're a humble man. Uh, yeah, I was humbling, honestly, because um, I, I don't go after awards. I'm not looking for any of that. I'm just looking to make people happy. So it was really nice. It was a um, uh, high honor, put it that way. And you had some tough competition there. And yeah, I, was, I was just so, I was just so yeah. thrilled for you. So congratulations. I was surprised, honestly, because yeah, they were all, all very talented artists. So yeah. Indeed. So let's move on to the element fire. You work on earth with stone and wood, and you also work with fire. So talk to us about Cirque de Fuego and your collaboration with your wife, Kim. Give us, a, give us a, a detail about what that is and let our viewers know how they know about this and how'd you get into it? Um, what inspires you? Um, yeah, so uh, as I was saying, we started doing the burning sculptures. Uh, you know, when I turned 35 and we were looking for ways to light them on fire. So we kind of kept researching that and found a school, um, if you will, a, a camp uh, called Wildfire in Connecticut. And it's a three day retreat where you basically all you learn about is different elements of fire. There's advanced, intermediate and um, beginner classes. Uh, and so I decided I wanted to learn how to fire breathe onto these sculptures. I thought it'd be a really cool way to ignite them. And uh, Kim um, fell in love with Poi in the beginning. And- uh, Fell in love with what? I'm sorry, I cannot- Poi, yeah, Poi, which is um, 
true translation is uh, uh, fire on rope. Um, so they, uh, it's spinning fire. Yeah, there's so many different elements of fire spinning. There's um, different props. So you have like fire staff, which people have seen like Hawaiian dancers do. Um, there's fire breathing, fire eating. Those are two that everybody's familiar with. And then there's fire fans and palm torches, staffs, uh, dragon staff, um, et cetera. Um, so we basically started performing um, in front of friends and family at weddings or get togethers, and then decided to turn it into a business because it was really fun for us. And we were working together, you know, it was, um, so my wife left her, uh, her quote unquote real job in uh, 2010. Uh, she was working for the Rock Fresh Network. Um, we left the family business in 2001. And then, um, so she joined forces, but she had a, a job, a sustainable, uh, substantial job. And I was basically a, a, an artist at that point. And uh, so when we started this, it was great for us to work together and have fun together. And, uh, you know, so we do a lot of partner acts like that. And um, so we started a community of fire arts in this area from what we had learned in Connecticut at Wildfire. Um, basically to keep the fire arts, uh, number one, sustainable, number two, safe. Um, and back when we started it, um, Vermont wasn't too friendly on the fire arts. So we had to basically go to a lot of people and explain what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, we even went and got our uh, New York City uh, um, fire performers uh, in um, card, which is the only um, fire uh, license, if you will, fire performing license you can get in America. So, um, because New York's very, very strict about it. So we went to New York city, we went to the fire department there in New York city and took the test and got certified. Um, but essentially we kind of started the fire arts in this area to make sure that everyone was safe and not competing against each other and, um, didn't ruin it for everybody else because, it's such a dangerous, dangerous thing, but when done properly, it's not. So um, we like to think we're like the grandparents of the fire arts in Vermont, if you will. <laughs> you're too young to be the grand, but you, <laughs> you are the, you are, you're definitely the the leaders in this. So can you share with folks where the wildfire retreat is for anyone who might want to get involved with the, the fire arts? Yeah, it's in Connecticut, and I can't remember exactly what town it is. Um, I do apologize, but it is, um, if you Google or look up wildfire in Connecticut, you will definitely find it. Um, it's really, really neat, um, and it's worth it. Um, so my viewers should should Google wildfire retreat in Connecticut if they decide they want to yeah. join Chris and his, his, his team, his group, his tribe uh with uh the fire arts now you used to be a fire breather but you had to give it up because of its effect on your lungs uh with chemical pneumonia can you talk a little bit about that yeah i can um so i started fire breathing again and it's working fine um now you are so you're doing it yeah. again now okay so what yeah happened? i i had to stop for quite a while um it was about a full not a full year but about a full year um i had a whole month and a half spell of chemical pneumonia so that's the um most dangerous thing about fire breathing uh i mean obviously inhaling the fire is horrible but it's the um non uh burned uh particulate that you get if you breathe it back in and I was doing it in high winds um, and I knew I shouldn't have, but I did anyway. And so, uh, but I, I made it eight years fire breathing without chemical pneumonia and um, in our trade that that's saying something, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird how you don't want to give something up uh, even though, you know, it's dangerous for you, but um well, it is dangerous and, and, you know, doing anything with fire is dangerous and you, and you're, but you're using it as an art form, as a performing, uh, as an informative. Talk to us about Burning Man. I, it's a, I've always wanted to go to Burning Man and, and you attended Burning Man. Did you take, did you create sculptures for Burning Man and talk a little bit about what Burning Man is for my viewers who might not know what it is? Yeah. So Burning Man is uh, one of the world's largest art 
venues, if you will. It's a temporary city that's put up for one week, but it takes a month to set it up. It's out in uh, um, Nevada in the desert uh, on uh, um, federal land. Um, so, but it's an entire uh, government run, essentially a government run by just burners themselves. So like we, we have our own rangers, which are kind of our own police department. Um, and so many volunteers and first aid and everything. Um, but it is some of the most magnificent interactive art you'll ever find in your life. And it totally changed my art style forever. Um, I went there and I was like, wow, everything is art and it should all be interactive, you know, like bring the people together, let them play with it, let them see it. And people climb on everything at Burning Man, people, there are shenanigans everywhere. It's so much fun, but it is all about the art and the beauty. And, um, there's, you know, uh, there's uh, 10 principles in Burning Man, which is kind of like the 10 commandments for us, but a lot of them are like gifting, give people gifts, um, radical self-reliance, bring in everything you need, just do it. You know, you're in the desert, you need, you need to be able to survive in the desert for a week, but that doesn't mean that somebody isn't going to come and offer you um, food or beverages just because they want to, because that's their gift. Um, so it's a really, really neat community and, um, uh, really inspiring. Um, you can talk to the artists about what they made. You can, they're happy to share their trade secrets and, um, you know, how they do what they did. And you, it, I always look at it as almost like an education instead of a party, if, if you will. Um, and anyone, and any, and anyone can go. Absolutely. Yeah. You just have to get tickets. That's the hard part nowadays. Um, when I first went to Burning Man, it was 2009. I uh, helped a sculptor named Homer Wells, a uh, great guy, great sculptor, um, build a thing called the Time Cycle, which was a 20 foot Ferris wheel that drove. Um, so I had two wheels in the back and two gigantic 20 foot, actually 20 foot, eight inch wheels uh, that drove and you could drive it in reverse, but the Ferris wheel would go forward or vice versa. So it literally had an independent um, mechanism inside. We call it the planetary gear, uh, but that would run the Ferris wheel. So we could give rides to six people while they drove, which was really, really neat. It was um, um, new. I mean, it was like nothing Burning Man had ever seen in an art car. So it was really, really cool to see uh, how they um, how they enjoyed it and uh, yeah. how we kind of made our mark as Vermonters. Uh, and um, that it changed my life, put it that way. That's extraordinary. Well, thank you for sharing that story with us, Chris. Um, talk a little bit about your workshops. You you host workshops, right? Yeah, yeah, we do um, kids workshops for making ornaments, stone ornaments. I make these uh, slate ornaments out of reclaimed shingles uh, from old buildings. Um, so I let people set up and uh, cut the stones themselves and then um, lay out the template for the rubber resist and, and create their own design and sandblast. Uh, I do the sandblasting myself, but I let them do every other process, part of the process. And then we do a thing called sip and carve. And so we do that for adults and it's like an evening, you know, just fun. Learn how to carve stone, have fun, drink some hot cider usually. So I would love to do that. I need to, I, I would yeah, love to do that. Love and people can find out more about this by going to your website, which is on the rocks.com. So to all my viewers, go visit Chris and Kim's website on the rocks.com. So on your website, I think it might be on the rocks, vt.com. Rock I, I might be wrong, but well, yeah, you would know it is on the rocks, vt.com. Yeah. So I'm kind of a dinosaur. I don't use computers just to oh, let you, you know that don't use computers. <laughs> That's why you have all this time to do the creative work that you do. I like I, that. Yeah. That's that says volumes. I mean, you're that says volumes about your mind and your soul. Um, and that's what gives you all the time to do this great stuff. Is you're somebody who's not into computers. Bless your heart on that one. I've spent too much time on a computer now. But let's go back to your website on the rocks vt dot com. I apologize yeah. for that. No, now, I, on I your website, you talk about come visit me. It's it's like come just stop in. So you've opened your home and your studio to the public, uh, just to come visit. Is is that is that the case? Yeah. Well, um, during COVID, we kind of did you know. Now. Um. So and then I've been renovating my house. So now it's um, 
not, you know, it's not as welcoming as it used to be, but I am always interested in having people stop by. I just had a kid stop by yesterday from the VYCC and he would just had to stop and tell me that he loved the love sculpture out front. And uh, I gave him a 45 minute tour. I dropped what I was doing. And, you know, I love to share this with people. Absolutely. So you know, Chris, any time with you is special. I've been there. I've gotten it. I've, I wouldn't call it a tour. I, it is a tour, but it's more an, just a delightful experience. Um, your gardens, your sculptures, your, your studio is phenomenal. Now talk to me real, real quickly about uh, 420, the stoner holiday history with the legalization of pot. Uh, you felt vindicated and proud to display your six and a half foot high 420 creation. And you did state in one of the articles I read that 42 is the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. Talk to me about that and about the sculpture that you created. Um, Zen Barn Farms in uh, Waterbury, uh, I, they're, they're friends of ours. We made um, two giant cannabis leaves and burned those for 420 um, about four years ago. Um, David Zuckerman actually led the procession up to the burn and then we burned these gigantic cannabis leaves. We actually choreographed uh, a whole show to cannabis songs um, and then burn the two leaves. Uh, that was two years in a row. And then since then, they've commissioned me to make uh, non-burning art. So we have the word kind um, on a trailer in front of their place in Waterbury as you go through Waterbury. And then uh, he had me do 420 for 420. Um, it was really fun to see it in the Warren Parade on a trailer with a band playing around it. It was a riot. Um, but they're, um, it's really neat to see the cannabis industry supporting the arts, uh, you know, um, it's it's a brand new industry, so seeing that happen is really cool. That's wonderful. Talk to us about forty two. Forty two of life. Talk talk to us about that. I'm very curious. So it stayed forty two in my back in my front yard for a while because the zero took a long time to build, and um, that just be, it became a topic of conversation in our neighborhood. And it just, every I heard every part of forty two from everybody, and it was just just neat, you know. Um, it's also Jackie Robinson's number, I think. Right, right. But it is the answer to the ultimate question of like the universe and everything. I just love it. Um, well, you know, we're coming to the end of, of my show, Chris. Um, and I want to I want to talk to you. I just want to tell you that you are a gentle and loving person. And I've enjoyed getting to know you over the years. You and your family have contributed so much by bringing art, performance, community, building, expression. Um, and it's how we need to sort of live in the world. Um, I want to wish you well in all that you do and all that you are. And uh, I really want to thank you so much for your time here today. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with my viewers before we sign off? Um, if you're a young aspiring artist, always believe that you can do it. You can make a living as an artist. You can make a living as an artist. And to all my viewers, I really encourage you to go to ontherocksvt.com and visit uh, Chris and Kim's website. And um, thank you so much, Chris, for your time. I really appreciate it. And thank to my you. viewers, thank you. And to my viewers, thank you for joining me and Chris Cleary. And I will see you soon. Have a beautiful day.